Welcome, everybody. My name is Nicole Boone. I am a project manager on Checkbook and the controller's office. I am here today with Ed Sokolowski, who is the executive director of systems development and program management for our office. And we are all here because Josiel Estrella helped us to be here today and got us all into one Zoom room so that we could go over this. So thank you, Josiel. I wanted to start this one, this session, very differently than I've ever started any other session. Um, and in this session, you're expected to have been using checkbook for a while now, but you will get something out of the session, whether you've used it before or not. Doing searches in checkbook, I want to add the caveat that while checkbook is an amazing source of information, we only go down to a certain level and granularity of the, of FMS data. So you may not always find exactly what you're looking for, but you might find the pieces of what you're looking for to dig further, to support your FOIL request, to ask an agency something more specific based on what you found in checkbook. I'm actually starting, I'm going to start us with an example of a search I started in preparation for this. And it's not one that actually gave me the results I was looking for. And that's why I'm using it, because I want to show you where my information ends in checkbook and then where I would have to start digging out there. I'm sorry, I feel like somebody just commented. No, there's no, there, okay. it, somewhere between Ed or, or, or Gisella, there's a small echo that happens. Okay. Okay, that's fine. I'll ignore it. Okay. In preparation for this, I went out onto the controller's Twitter page. I read some comments and people kept asking about a program called Thrive. So I thought, great. This is a program that people want to know about. They want to know if they can get this information out of checkbook. Let me see if I can get it out of checkbook. So what I do when I start an advanced search or any kind of search in checkbook and I'm looking for very specific data, I start by doing all the research I can on what I'm looking for, because I may not know immediately how to extract that information. So in order to find out, I had to read some articles about Thrive. I had to understand the program. And then number two, I made some assumptions. My assumption is that most of Thrive would be found in a certain agency within dental hygiene. So I went there first and I extracted everything I could. I, for, so first I wanted to see, okay, so Thrive must be budgeted for. So I went to the budget domain. I pulled down the budget code that I could find associated with Thrive. And then I matched the budget code to spending transactions. I'm just going to walk us through this verbally. And then we're going to go to checkbook and look about at how this would be done. And then once I associate, I got the spending transactions associated with those codes, I went back and then I looked up all of the different contracts associated with that spending to get the full list. Should have gotten everything, right? I did not. Some of my assumptions were wrong. So let's just start by, I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna go to the checkbook site. I went to use up here in the corner is advanced search. It's done into little tabs for each of the domains. So I started at budget. I looked for the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, and then I went to budget name. I had no idea how this is budgeted, so I just typed in and I got these specific budget names. I wrote down my budget name. Oh, sorry, actually, I actually exported each of these budget names to extract the budget code. So let me just show you that really quickly. If you know the budget code going in, you can just throw the budget codes into advanced search, but I didn't. This was a totally random search for me. By going in, I pulled out the budget code of 8412 and I wrote it down. I did this for each of those budget names that had Thrive in it. And then I went back to advanced search. So if I'm making assumptions, I am trying to feel my way through the data to figure out what I'm trying to find. So now I am going back to the spending domain. And I know because I read articles about it that Thrive started in the beginning of 2015. And so I put in, issue, so for my spending issue date, I put a range in here from 2015, it was January, to today's date. And I exported that information. Once I exported that, I got my spreadsheet and then I narrowed it down. I filtered my spreadsheet and I narrowed it down to the budget codes I was looking for. And it didn't come out to nearly the amount of money that the had stated. So I thought, well, maybe I'm missing something. So I went back to my, to my assumptions. And I was like, let's rethink these assumptions. Maybe all of the spending 
and all of the budgeting did not happen strictly within Department of Health and Hygiene. So I went back to advanced search. I went back to my budget. And this time we just kept the filter at agency, all city agencies. I didn't limit it to one. And then I went to my budget code name. I typed in Thrive. And now I've got a lot more names associated with a lot more budget codes. So I went back in. I got the other budget codes that I was missing from last time. And I added that to my search. Still didn't get everything. And I'm like, why can't I match this? Why can't I match this? So the issue then comes down to the level of granularity that we have and the way that we create budgets in the city. And we had this issue. I'm going to stop share just for a second so we can talk. We had this issue when we were trying to figure out all of the COVID spending across the city because there are budget codes just for COVID. But let's just say I'm a person here in the controller's office and I need to buy face masks. I'm obviously buying face masks for my office because we have a COVID epidemic, but we also have a Staples account. And so I might just go and place an order on Staples and that order may go in under a different budget account, may go under our administration account. It may go under, you know, supplies. And and I might put even in the purpose, yeah, but I'm buying them for COVID because they're a purpose line in all of our purchases. But I can't connect it to the actual COVID budget code because we use a different budget code for that particular expenditure. So this is where our searches might start to, you know, break down. So at this point in my search, I have enough information to say, look, I got all of this out of the, the budget codes assigned to Thrive. These are my actual numbers that I can see. And then I might go to the different agencies and say, where are your other expenses for Thrive? What other budget codes might I look for? That sort of thing. But I wanted this to be an interactive experience. So what I want to do is hopefully take a hands raise, someone who actually has a search they're looking for, and then take the whole group through that search and through the logic and maybe even take suggestions on the logic. Does anybody have their own search that they're trying to try and sort out? If you are interested and want to verbally uh, respond, you can unmute yourself right now and ask the question. Hello, this is uh, uh, with, uh, a few years ago, we did a project, a study on employment programs in the city of New York. We started with an analysis that was done by, at the time, the agency was the uh, mayor's office of human capital development, I believe it was. And we went from that study and the goal was to first try to identify the total number, total amount of money that was spent on employment programs within the city. And the end result, there were like 14 agencies. Just to go into the budget and look it up was a effortless project because like you said, pointed out, budget codes were all over and things could have been supplies. So we had to go with self-reported information by the 14 agencies that we identified. And there was information all over. So it would be interesting to see if using open data, we could do that would be a uh, very, because, uh, so like when, it, go ahead. I'm sorry. When you said you went to the budget side, were you able to find a budget code with employment programs on it? Not really, not very easily. There was no one place that said employment. For example, there may have been social services involved that had certain kinds of support programs or training programs. Then you may have had CUNY that had other types of programs for specific groups of people, income levels. So it, it went so through. Basically advanced. the budgeted line item would be on programs rather than which individual program. More than likely, yeah. So and that, and that is a, one, of, one of our constraints. Yeah, it, yeah. it would. And, and, yeah, quite challenging. That and that's a hard one because of the limitations of how deep and grant and granularity we get with our information. Like you could definitely find out what programs, agencies, what agencies are budgeting for programs, how much money they're spending on programs, specifically which programs. You're right, Lynn. That's going to be that's going to be a challenge, and that would take some more deep diving going to the individual agencies. That's you can use good. checkbook though as a backup. You could say, look, I know you have this much money in programs. We're trying to find to get a breakout of exactly how much went into your employment programs, that sort of thing. And that's why I say that checkbook can be a starting out point for what you're looking for. It might be an end point too, and that's always wonderful. But sometimes it's just there's a, it's a leap off point for you to go in hand with your information and say, now I need more. 
now I need to go a little bit deeper. We had actually, we had a request earlier after our first session and between and into the session, we had a request for a granular search on, on exact expenses, items purchased, where they were sent kind of request. And again, that becomes really difficult because checkbook just doesn't go down to that level of granularity and like exactly what was purchased and where is it going. NYCHA does. So hang out for the, for when we do finally do the NYCHA one, we can show you that. But unfortunately, we just can't get down to that level citywide. But does anyone have a search that they've been interested in doing and haven't done yet? And we're maybe hoping we could walk it through for this that I can actually <laughs> walk you through. I was just wondering, I'm just doing a little research on the governor's island, which we provide donations. Now, how do we look that up? Which agency? Governor's we... Island. Mm-hmm. So you don't know which agency is no. the governor's island? Yes. Okay. Which? So I'm going to assume that it's coming through a grant program? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you know if it's a state gr- grant program, a non-governmental grant or a federal grant? No, it's a city. I just, I was able to pull up the finance from the controller office, but other than that, I have no, I have no. Okay. So my first thing in the search would be to go to revenue. Okay. And to look at the, the to, it's, I'm just going to, I'm not sure. I'm just going to look through the revenue. Still, and if anybody has ideas, like throw them out there. Cause I am, when it comes to finding this, I am as shooting in the dark as anybody else. But I would start with revenue. I would start with grant. I think it would be important to find out where the funding was coming from precisely, whether whether we're looking at non-governmental grants or the government state grant. If part of it's coming from state grants, you can at least Mm -hmm. submit it and take a look. These look a lot. So let's see what agencies are involved here. Because I'm going to assume that we're talking about Parks and Rec. Mm -hmm. This is Ed. So another question for you. So there's a vendor called Governor's Island Corporation. Yes. Okay, so that's, so I'll let Nicole finish what she's doing, but there could be another way sure. to look at this also. Yeah, that's another thing that I was thinking about, but I don't know how, even that, I didn't know how to look it up. Okay. So this is actually a good step for me to start. Okay. And and this is why this is so important, because in check, but there are a million ways to get at what you're trying to find. You try one thing, and if it doesn't work, you got to come back in and, and look at it a different way. Mm-hmm. And again, now I'm looking at the information I have here in my revenue, and it is, again, it's, it's a little too high level for what you're trying to drill down on. Mm-hmm. So this is obvious. We're going to try Ed's way. All right. So Ed's way would have to be uh, just put in Governor's, Governor's Island in, the, in your address. Okay. Mm-hmm. And this is, this is. And then look at okay. the contracts. And then look at the contracts, Nicole. The contract. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so there's a whole series of, it looks like replacing roofing and ferry design. We've had these numerous contracts out there for yeah, I saw that. I found that, but we're looking for something that they do building buildings, but that's not, I didn't see anything that was. And I don't see a revenue contract out here either. So we're not going to find it through the Governor's Island Court. But this but might you know be what? a great place mm-hmm. to start by reaching out to small business services asking Mm -hmm. them what information that they have on the Governor's Island Court. That's what I mean by your search being a starting point with Checkbook. It may not give you everything you need, but it might give you the pieces, the information to reset your assumptions, find a new path, and maybe find a new way to find the information you need. Just questions. One more question. Um, So grant is considered a revenue. It's not a expense if i was looking. no a grant would be a revenue because it's money coming into the city to pay for things what checkbook cannot do for you guys is actually map revenue data coming into the to the expense fms does not does not have a type of data set up where you can actually trace it in as money's coming in it goes into may go into the general fund but once it's released to the general fund it, you don't know what's uh, budget code, it would expense category went into. So that type of mapping doesn't exist. Now, the Office of Management and Budget may know that potentially, but in FMS, there's no way of mapping that data. So for this particular one, where we're talking about Governor's Island Corporation, there's these contracts out there for building demolition, rehabilitation of the building. It actually says real rehabilitation of building 20 in Nolan Park. So it has some information in it, and it's it's a combination of 
it looks like it's some of them are from the Department of Education, some of them are small business services, but this is where you get a hook into Economic Development Corporation too. So EDC, Economic Development Corporation, is really a vendor to small business services, and EDC may be involved in some of the governor's, of the Governor Island work. So these are some of the flows that you got to look at the data and follow through and see how it, so you might be going to EDC to ask for information on this. Okay. Thank you. Advanced searches and, and doing searches in checkbook, we try to make the process as, as logical as it possibly can be, but there is, it's definitely, it's actually one of my favorite things in my job because when I get a request, it's like, Ooh, I get to be a detective. I get to figure out how to drill down on this thing and find this thing, but it does take effort. And there have been days when we've gotten a request from a journalist and I've been completely sidetracked for half a day while I'm trying to narrow down on what this person is looking for. So this isn't a simple like, here's the class, here's advanced search, here's data feed, there, you're good, everything. This is more understanding that there are different pockets of information living in different places in checkbook and you may need to resource different aspects of your query to get that thing that you're looking for. If you have a query, and we went over this in the first one, but if you have a query in advanced search that returns way too many records, because that will happen, um, checkbook is huge. And depending on the query, you might get over 100 rows of information back. Advanced search can only download up to 100,000 records. So when you're in this position and you need to go bigger, you can come up here to data feeds in the top row, click on data feeds. You can select whichever domain you're looking to extract information out of. You have all the same choices as you do on the other side. You can choose your agency. You can choose the kind of spending, your date range. You can choose exactly what you want to see in your export file. Click submit. I chose a huge ask here so that you could see. So you can see there's 32 million transactions. You couldn't possibly fit this into even one file. So I'm going to enter my email address and then it's going to return a tracking number. This way it can query that your results behind the scenes when you get, it'll email me the tracking number. And when it's ready, I just pop my tracking number in, hit go, and it'll download my file. So that's when you have a really large search and you need to look through a lot of information. I'm going to stop sharing to entertain questions, thoughts, I want to make this useful, but finding information from checkbook, it, it's not a straightforward process. So that's why your examples are helpful or your, even your examples are helpful to find out like how far we can, what we can find. Hi, Nicole. This is um, Sergio. Okay. I, I, I missed the first session uh, this morning. I'm vaguely familiar with the checkbook, but could you explain what sources other than FMS checkbook consumes to build your data sets? Sure. We get our pending contract information from a system called Oasis. We also get our subcontractor information from the payment information portal. Ed, am I missing any? And then we get our main information from FMS. Payroll data comes from FMS, and that kind of covers the whole city side. Okay. Obviously, we have uh, subs, uh, no, another domain for NYCHA, which we get directly daily information from NYCHA that gets updated. And then we also get uh, uploads from EDC. That provides information too. I see. <clears throat> so there's more data other than just FMF financial information, right? Okay. Yeah. At the top, you have the citywide agencies, and next to it, you have other government entities. And in there, you'll find NYCHA and you'll find EDC. And another um, tangential question I had while well, you were uh, explaining the band search and all of that. Different criteria. Does this is just more of a curiosity? Does the controller's office, let's say, track what's the let's say most popular searches, and then maybe try to improve the system based on that, or improve the visibility of the data based on what people are searching for? We see what we track: how many pages are getting hit, and what kind of traffic we're getting to different pages. Actual like individual searches for individual information. It would be hard to follow that train even to see exactly where they might be going in most cases, but we can at least see which pages are getting hit the most. We definitely have people staying at the spending and contracts page and maybe not going a lot deeper. Our, our power users are definitely the ones that are doing searches through advanced search and data feeds and APIs if they're using APIs. 
And budget and revenue get the least activity. Under our help, we have our site navigation glossary, which is very helpful in terms of understanding the different kinds of contracts we have out there, the different terms we use in terms of like in the contract domain, we have expense contracts, we have revenue contracts, we have something that I wanted to point out is we have all the agency codes here, which is very helpful when you are to say you have a contract number. Let's just go to the contract. We're at citywide contract. You click on this one. <laughs> so this is the entire contract number for us, for checkbook. But in reality, a lot of people will get contract numbers to reference that start at 2018. That would be that cutoff. So the CT1 tells us what kind of contract it is. It means it's a standalone contract. The 856, that's your agency code, so you know which agency this contract was made through. And that's where that agency list comes in handy because then you can track, you can backtrack it. And then the real contract number, the, the number that most people associate with the contract number starts here. The 2018 is the year it was registered and the rest of the number. So if you were going to go to an advanced search and all you had was just this portion of the number, you could asterisk that, put it under their contract ID. And I'll just show that to you. And you could still come up with your with the contract you're looking for. Sorry, I needed to take that number first. Great. So I can put it under the contract ID. There we go. And it pre-populates with the actual contract number that we started with. So even if you have a partial contract number, you can do that search and come up with what you're looking for. Another important aspect of Checkbook is that once you do a search, you may not just want to do it the one time. Maybe you want to find every new pending contract that comes into the controller's office when it comes in. So I'm going to go to create alert. It was made to look exactly like the advanced search page with all of the different criteria. But I can do my advanced search. I can do that criteria search. So I can go to office of the controller. I'm looking for my agency. Why am I blank? There we go. I can click on pending contract and then I'm going to hit next. So it shows me my result. Go next. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to name it. I'm going to put my email in. I'm going to want, I'm going to want that result daily because sending, I want to see every pending contract that comes in. And then I'm going to set my end date to this search and I'm going to hit schedule alert. You'll get a confirmation email in your email address, and then you will receive every time a new pending contract comes in for the controller's office, you will receive an email alert. So that's a neat feature, too, so that you don't have to sit on checkbook always when you're looking for something that might be changing over time. Hi, hi Nicole. It's Sergio. Hi, hi Sergio. Uh, this is a very interesting feature, and I, I didn't pay much attention to, you, to the search on the screen, but is there a way... Let's say for someone to track when, uh, let's say, a certain contract is increased in dollar value. Yes. Okay. Nice. Sure. So I, I would do the same thing. I would go back into my create alert. You'd put in that contract ID. You would put how often you want to see updates to it. Okay. So put in a contract ID. I'm sorry, Sergio. You wanted to see the change in amount on that contract. Yeah. Let, let's say so, someone is tracking a specific contract or vendor across different agencies and they want to know whenever let's say that uh, contract is increased in dollar value there's a revision to the contract or a renewal of the contract the same contract id but the dollar value increases let's say can, can someone put in an alert for that i just thought of that question while you were going through the exercise i think you can Sergio. if you we have to do like status is pending with the contract id and then you'd have to change the, uh, and then make the occurrence one. Because the yeah. default is to yeah. change the occurrence for one. And anytime you, we've never done that. We, mm. have we, because usually there's after a CT1. So I, I'd be curious to see if it would pick mm -hmm. up a CTR if it's a contract, if okay. it's a contract amendment. Okay. That, that is a good point because what happens to a, what happens to a contract when it is changing is it changes its contract number to CTR, as Ed said, and we haven't done it. So that's actually, you just cast me there, but I have a workaround. Okay. <laughs> um, for that specific example, you can go to a contract ID page and click see, the first contract I see. Yeah, it actually might work because if it, if it returns the CT1, it would show the pending contract in the contract detail page. So it might it work. It should, yeah. 
it should work. We haven't tried that. That's a good, that's a good test case. Okay. New feature. We're going to have to <laughs> test it now and, and make well, sure it works. I'll have to work. test it to see if it actually works. I have to go back and look for, I'll just see, I have to look, find a pending contract list. On, so when you go to an individual contract ID page, you have all of the information about the contract. You have its current amount, its original amount, its spent to date. You have all of its general information, including it the date range, the registration date, whether it has a sub vendor on it. But what is really nice, and we were going over this in the beginning, is, is that the contract history is all here throughout the year. So you can see the changes that happen to a contract every time there's a number revision. Mm -hmm. What specifically is happening is not always clear. If there is an obvious money change from one contract revision to the other, then that's what changed. So that's another way to get at when a contract is changing. Just go to its contract ID page and see the dates of when the last modifications took place, exactly what happened. And if you want to know exactly what happened that changed on that contract, that's when you would take this and say, I saw a contract revision happen. Go back to that agency. Can we find out what changed on that contract? Okay. Because that's the only other workaround I can think other than setting an alert is just checking the contract ID page for all because it's all listed right there as they come in. Okay, but someone can set up an alert whenever that contract has an action, an activity, an, an amendment, or whatever, and then come back here and review the the specifics. So, Sergio, on his page at the top there, where you saw those, you would see a you would see pending as a line that would say pending contracts, right? Sixty seven would if there was a sixty seven, it would be pending. Right now, it says be right. or registered, but you would see a pending one. That would be the that we link the CTRs to the parents contract in CT1. I see. Okay. Thanks, Ed. Anybody else? Nicole, just on, on a follow-up question on the same screen when we see registered, and what would happen in case of a uh, master agreement? The, uh, An MMA one? Yes. Yeah, they would show up also as master agreements, and then a modification to a master agreement will be an MA. It was followed the, the similar logic. You can see the relationships. You can see the changes going through on master agreements. Would you like to look at a master agreement page? Well, see if you see if you got an MAR, Nicole. Look at look okay. for a mod the look for mod Yeah, look for modification on the on the on the and the, see if there's an MAR back there. Go back. I would love uh, to look up Link NYC if you're looking for examples. I'm sorry. Go, go back to pending. Go to pending contracts, Nicole. Yeah. Okay. Now go in the master agreement modifications, which you got 344 of those. Open one of those up. Okay. Go down. Let's see. Here. Come on. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So let's look at master agreement modifications. So just click on any of those MARs. Go down. Okay. That's good. Click on. Yeah. Okay. Click, click on one of those. It's, I clicked on it. I clicked okay. on it. I'm sorry. I didn't see it. Take a sec. Okay, so you can see that the parent contract is an MMA one. And then and it, on the version, you see it's pending. And in this case, it looks like there was a dollar increase because version 12 had 114 million as a current amount. And then if you look up the next version, which will be 13, you see it's up to 125 million. And the increase decrease for the total is that no, you look at it was originally eight, now it's at 117. So you can get an idea how the contract's increasing over time. Did that answer your question? Yes. Ed. Answer. Only thing is, that was if it's a master agreement, it could be used by many different agencies. Correct. Yeah. Yes, it can. Where would that information show up? Right underneath. We As we show the contracting agency in the no, system span. Well, go. Cool. Uh, he was asking about who's utilizing it, who's using that. Well, so that that goes to CTA one. Uh, so you can see under you can see all of the associated CTA ones underneath the master. And then you can, it breaks out by Agency. Economic Development Corp. Yeah, you can see who's using it. You can see the history, the spending transactions. And then all of these are done in an accordion fashion. So you can get all of that information if you open up the accordion. But you can see each of the contract, each of the different contracts. And then you can see who are the, what is it, what is the individual contract that the child contract associated to? Thank you. Anybody else? We have seven minutes remaining. There was a question that was, is there a way to create an alert for spending contracts for uh, Mock J specifically, or is the, or can they create an alert based upon uh, the mayoralty? Absolutely. So you can, anything that you can pull out an event search, you can create an alert for. So you just need to choose 
um, mayoralty as your agency. And we're looking for spending transactions, correct? So I'll choose mayoralty. And then I'll choose, you, you want all new, trans, all new spending transactions, correct? Yeah. Correct. So I would choose an issue date starting today. If you only want to see new transactions, if you want to see transactions the past, you just change the date range. And then I would put it through whenever or so going back a month through today. And then I'd hit next. <laughs> there are no new spending transactions. That's fine. But, but you'll get to, so until you get a new trip. So hmm, maybe let me take off the issue. Let me put okay. my date range happened. There's nothing that happened today. So it didn't take my date range. <laughs> so then you get the total spending transactions for them. Then when you hit next, you set, you want to see anything that comes in after that up to a specified date. And you will get transa- all, all the spending transactions for mayoral date. You can narrow down your results back in the advanced search aspect of it. Say you only want to see for certain expense, certain expenses under mayoral date. You can narrow it down to that too and just get those results, certain spending transactions results. But you can do anything you can do in advanced search. You can do with your alert. I think you took all years. It's still working. <laughs> I know. I, I shouldn't have taken all year. It's a goal. All years is dangerous because it's just blowing. Ten years worth of data. 